Hackers from Anonymous, an international network of hacktivists, have posted a letter in which Angela Merkel's associates ask US special services to wiretap her political opponents. Before this, Western media have for years been building up Angela Merkel as a new Iron Lady, transforming her on paper into Europe's most powerful politician, year after year, including her in the lists of the world's most influential women. Now we see the truth. In the past few years, the Chancellor has faced extensive criticism over her decisions that are in conflict with Germany's national interests. Many Germans also criticized Merkel for her policy of double standards with regard to Ukraine and Crimea, which has soured relations with Russia and caused serious losses for German companies operating on the Russian market. Meanwhile, it is obvious even to an outsider that for some reason Merkel's actions only benefit the United States. Merkel, in effect, got a deal with Barack Obama in exchange for the possibility of using US technical intelligence assets against her opponents in the country. These facts explains many events in Germany's internal political situation that have played out in the past few years. For example, the defeat of Frank Walter Steinmeier, an advocate of better relations with Moscow in the race for the Chancellor's office in 2009. It also makes clear how Merkel exerted pressure on Pierre Steinberg, who sought the post last year. Somehow, the media learned about all of his family problems, meetings and affairs. As a result, Steinberg not only lost to Merkel, but announced the end of his political career. We will probably never know how many other politicians, businessmen and journalists were blackmailed and pressured by the US puppet in the office of the Federal Chancellor. Ebola, previously known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever, is a rare and deadly disease caused by infection with one of the Ebola virus strains. Ebola is caused by infections with a virus of the family Filoviridae, genus Ebola virus. There are five identified Ebola virus species, four of which are known to cause disease in humans. Ebola virus, Sudan virus, Thai forest virus and Bundibagyu virus. The fifth, Reston virus has caused disease in non-human primates, but not in humans. Ebola was first discovered in 1976 near the Ebola River in what is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Since then, outbreaks have appeared sporadically around the world. There is as yet no proven treatment available for Ebola. In 2014, Ebola outbreaks have appeared around the world. The high lethality and the lack of effective treatments make Ebola one of the most dangerous viruses in the world. The Islamic militia group ISIS formerly known as Al-Qaeda in Iraq and recently rebranded as the so-called Islamic State, is a stuff of nightmares. They are ruthless, fanatical killers on a mission. And that mission is to wipe out anyone and everyone from any religion or belief system and to impose Sharia law. The mass executions, beheadings and even crucifixions that they are committing as they work towards this goal are flaunted like badges of pride. Video taped and uploaded for the whole world to see. Evil has shown us the new face in 2014. But who armed and trained them? We remember that CIA was actively helped the Libyan rebels against Gaddafi. But who was that rebels? The fact that the leader of the Libyan rebels, Abdel Hakim Al Hazidi, admitted that his fighters included Al Qaeda linked jihadists who fought against Allied troops in Iraq. Remember, ISIS was Al-Qaeda before it was rebranded. With the assistance of US and NATO intelligence and air support, the Libyan rebels captured Gaddafi and summarily executed him in the street, all the while enthusiastically chanting Allah Akbar. For many of those who had bought the official line about how these rebels were freedom fighters aiming to establish a liberal democracy in Libya, this was the end of their illusions. ISIS became the threat of international community.
The Intelligence Committee of the United States Senate has released its long-awaited congressional report detailing the CIA's use of torture on prisoners in the wake of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. The executive summary of the roughly 6,000-page report was finally published by the Senate Intelligence Committee at 9 December 2014. A fraction of the full report, the 480-page executive summary, contains the committee's conclusions concerning the post-9-11 tactics deployed by the CIA under the administration of U.S. President George W. Bush in an attempt to gain intelligence from suspected terrorists. Those techniques include sleep deprivation and the simulated drowning practice known as waterboarding. Among the report's findings is that the CIA's use of enhanced interrogation techniques was not an effective means of acquiring intelligence. The CIA's justification for the use of such tactics rested on inaccurate claims of their effectiveness. The interrogations and conditions on confinement of detainees was far brutal and far worse than CIA claimed, and that the CIA actively avoided of embedded congressional oversight of the program. Some of the plots that the CIA claimed to have disrupted as a result of the CIA-enhanced interrogation techniques were assessed by intelligence and law enforcement officials as being infeasible of ideas that were never operationalized, reads the report's summary. So, CIA used tortures without any results. Just because it can. At the beginning of 2014, politico-social massive protests against activities of Ukrainian nationalist organizations began in the cities of southeastern Ukraine. Those demonstrations were held in defense of the Russian language status under anti-government and pro-federalization slogans. The protests broke out because the Ukrainian government that was installed in a coup d'etat refused to regard opinions and interests of people of the country's southeast who were up to preserve tight relationship with Russia. A plan of aggressive Ukrainization of Russian-speaking population designed by far-right movements and nationalist politicians whose political influence grew during Euromaidan demonstrations also fueled the protests. Kiev launched a punitive operation against inhabitants of the region in retaliation. Civil war started. The Donbas groups of popular self-defense repulsed the military forces of the Kiev regime. Now, Ukraine's president Petro Poroshenko signed the bill dropping his nation's non-aligned status at 29 of December 2014. Ukrainian government moves to join in NATO. United States started supplying military equipment to Ukraine. Is next step war against Russia 